In this video, we're going to use the double angle identities, and these are the last identities that we're going to use in this class. There are, are many more identities, but what we try to do in this class is go over the common ones that may show up again in calculus. And you can certainly look through the other identities that are in the textbook or any that you see online, and you use them in a similar fashion. Um, so the lessons that we've seen should give you a good foundation in how to verify. In this video, we're actually going to use the sum identity for sine and for cosine to verify what are called these double angle identities. And actually, more than verify, we're going to derive them. I'm going to ask you to start off by looking at the sine of double an angle. The sine of double theta is equal to the sine of theta plus theta. And so just take a minute have you pause the video and use the sum identity for sine to rewrite the sine of theta plus theta and then simplify as much as you can and then start the video again. Rewriting sine we get letting theta be alpha and then theta be beta it's this we would use the formula for sine of alpha plus beta that would give us sine of alpha cosine of alpha plus cosine of alpha sine of alpha now these two are exactly the same because of the commutative property of multiplication so this actually gives us two sine theta cosine theta and that's our first double angle identity sine of double an angle equals 2 sine theta cosine theta. So I'd like you to pause the video again and I'd like you to do the same for the cosine of 2 theta. By rewriting it as a cosine of theta plus theta we'd like to derive a new identity. Once you've done it and rewritten it, start the video again to check your work. So rewriting cosine 2 theta as cosine of theta plus theta, if we just let alpha, in this case alpha is theta and beta is also theta. So when you use the sum formula, you get cosine theta cosine theta minus sine theta sine theta, and we can rewrite that as cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta giving us our first identity for the cosine of a double angle. There are actually three versions of this identity. So the first being cosine 2 theta equals cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. What we're going to do now is use this cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta and we're going to manipulate it to come up with two more versions of this identity. We know that cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta from the Pythagorean identity. Right, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So we can rewrite cosine squared theta as 1 minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta. If we simplify this, we get 1 minus 2 sine squared theta which brings us to our, the second form of the identity for the cosine of a double angle. All right, I'd like you to try and come up with the third version of this by making a substitution on sine squared theta. We know that sine squared theta equals equal to 1 minus the cosine squared theta. So pause the video, make that substitution and simplify your expression and see if you can come up with the third and then start the video up again. So starting with cosine squared minus sine squared, we're going to make a substitution for sine squared. Substituting 1 minus cosine squared theta for sine squared gives us cosine squared theta minus 1 plus cosine squared theta when you distribute that negative. This gives us 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 and so this is our third identity for the double angle for cosine. 
so we'll just look back a little bit. So for sine, that was a little bit easier. There was only one form of it. We used the sum formula to derive the sine of a double angle. We got our first identity. For cosine, there are actually three separate versions of the identity. One we get by using the cosine of a sum. The other two we get by using a Pythagorean identity substitution. At this point, I'd like you to pause the video again and using the method that we just used, I want you to derive the formula or the identity for the tangent of a double angle using the tangent of theta plus theta and the sum formula for the tangent. And you can look up that formula, keep the sheet out that you have from the last lesson. So first thing we'll do is we'll write the formula down for the tangent of a sum. So we've already derived the formula for the tangent of alpha plus beta, only now both alpha and beta are the same. They're both theta. So when we do that, if we want to take the tangent of a double angle, which is equal to the tangent of theta plus theta, we use this formula, we're going to get the tangent of theta minus the, excuse me, plus the tangent of theta all over 1 minus the tangent of theta times the tangent of theta, right? Replacing both alpha and beta with theta. We can simplify this, leaving us with 2 tan theta my, over 1 minus tan squared theta. And all of the double angle identities for sine, cosine, and tangent are listed here. And again, you do not need to memorize these. I mean, the more you use an identity, the easier it is to memorize, but the sum and difference identities and the double angle identities you do not have to memorize. All right, let's have you pause the video and try one more verify, and then start the video up again and see how you did. to verify this last identity, I would work with the left-hand side. When you multiply sine theta minus cosine theta by itself, you get sine squared theta minus 2 sine theta cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. I'm going to rearrange. By rearranging, I can see the sine squared theta plus the cosine squared theta, that's equal to 1. Then I have minus 2 sine theta cosine theta is one of the identities. That's equal to the sine of a double angle. And I get 1 minus sine of 2 theta, and I verified the identity.